Today Baba is giving us the Srimat to be pure and Baba says purity is first and in Satyug we are very powerful so powerful that we rule over the whole world but that power is inside yes it is inside out it's not based on what we have on the outside and that power which is inside out comes from purity and today I was just thinking you know purity is the most difficult to define so you know peace is easy to define love is easy to define but purity is very difficult to define and purity is a very powerful state so the state of purity is a stage where you have the capacity of the lotus yes so it is something within the lotus which enables it to stay clean despite the muddy water yes it is that which is inside the lotus which enables it to stay clean despite the dirt and filth outside so purity is that for the human soul so you know when there is purity then I can stay in an impure world completely unaffected. And where there is impurity, then everything on the outside starts affecting me. And there's a very simple law. Either you will affect something or it will affect you. And if, it, and if something on the outside is affecting you, then you are the affected. You cannot influence it. So when you are influenced, you cannot influence. And Baba says that this is why the power of purity is, gives you the power to transform. Because when you have purity inside and so you know there are if you have knowledge you may have knowledge but you cannot make the not knowledgeful knowledgeful if you don't have purity so if you want to influence the environment if you want to influence the other souls and the only way to change is by influence. So you want to bring about any change in the world? This, is, this power is mandatory. Without the power of purity, you cannot bring about change. This is not within yourself, not outside. <coughs> so this is why purity is important. It is the power of purity which allows you to stay uninfluenced and which allows you to influence the atmosphere, the other souls. So that's the power of purity. And Baba says, in Satyug you rule with the power of purity. What is in the king that everybody, you know, treats them like parents it is the power of purity so it is that pure purity which makes you rule the world in satyog but how do you arrive at that purity because you see that um, these days the at this point of time every soul is very very impure so impure that even understanding purity becomes a big task 
So, how do we shift from this impurity to purity? And for that, Baba is giving us Srimat. So, the Srimat that Baba gives is basically the Srimat to become pure. And the more we internalize the knowledge, so you know, today Baba points out that if you remember that I am the grandchild of Shiv Baba and the child of Brahma Baba and technically we are all brothers and sisters because we are children of one God then how can I criminally assault the other? So if a brother and a sister engage in lust that would amount to criminal assault. <laughs> and Baba says, you are brothers and sisters, you know, because we are all children of, grandchildren of Shiv Baba and children of Brahma Baba. So Baba says, if you just, you know, delve deeply into this aspect of knowledge, who am I, who do I belong to, and what is my relationship with every other soul? Then this, in, this knowledge will give me the power to be pure. So, you know, uh, so imbibing knowledge because according to the truth, so the truth is that we are all children of one God having fraternal relationship with each other by design. Yes, so by design we are all uh, we are all children of Shiv Baba, and here in Sangam Yuga we are children of Brahma Baba. Shiv Baba adopted us through Brahma Baba, so we are all brothers and sisters to each other. So, if we just hold this in our awareness, that this would become a very good method. This would become a very good. Uh, you know, uh, yukti, what we call in Hindi, to stay pure. And so, you know, purity is not, so purity is when you, uh, when we follow all of Baba Srimad, then the product is purity. So, Baba has basically come to make us pure. So, first thing is internalizing knowledge, whether it is this aspect of knowledge that we are basically brothers and sisters or the aspect of knowledge that we are aiming to go to a world of purity where there is no lust, so where there is no vice. So if my aim is that, then how can I engage in vicious action now? So, even when we have clarity of our aim, that is to go to the world of purity, that power of internalizing that clarity of what my aim is, that will also give me the power to be pure. Then another aspect of knowledge is, I am by design a pure soul. And for two ages, the golden age and silver age, I remain viceless. Yes, so for two ages, I have not been vicious. There has been no trace. There is no memory of vices in those two ages. So the more you, um, the more you churn the Swadarshan chakra, then you get the power of purity because you remember you are always remembering that stage of your existence of, or, or that part in your drama where you are completely pure. And then Baba says, when you think about yourself as a soul and as the child of the ocean of purity, that also gives you the power of purity. So remembering Baba, so you know, remembering the new world, remembering the sweet home, remembering Baba. So yoga, so knowledge is one aspect, knowledge is one 
um, the internalizing knowledge, churning on knowledge, imbibing knowledge is one method to gain the power of purity. Then second thing is having yoga. When you remember your pure stage in the soul world, when you remember Baba, the ocean of purity, and when you remember the two ages when we have been completely pure, that also gives us the power of purity. That reminds us of our pure stage and it pulls us into the consciousness of purity. So, you know, when you are soul conscious, when you are supreme soul conscious, which is remembrance of Baba, when you are in remembrance of the pure home and when you are in remembrance of the pure world, then that, you know, my consciousness is elevated to a pure dimension. So that's also, so yoga is a very important element of purity. So uh, with yoga, with the ocean of purity, you become pure. So that's another aspect. Then Baba tells us dharana. So you know, impure, uh, so not engaging in actions, body, mind and wealth. So you know, we have three things. So the body, mind and wealth is that through which we create karma. So if we do not engage in impure actions through the body, mind and wealth, then there is a simple law which says, if you don't use it, you lose it. So if you are not allowing your impure sanskars to manifest themselves through body, mind and wealth, <coughs> by following Baba's directions, then that is also a very good method to become pure. Because if we keep engaging in impure actions of the body, mind and wealth, then obviously purity cannot be achieved because our sanskars of impurity are getting reinforced all the more. Yes. So what is purity, uh, pure action through body, mind and wealth. So, Baba says through the body do not engage in sensual pleasure. So, this last sensual pleasure that one engages in through the body, if that is done then the, then the sanskar of impurity gets reinforced. So, although you know every soul has sanskars of impurity because 63 births of uh, you know continuously engaging in, engaging in actions based on lust, anger, ego, attachment, greed and mainly lust and anger. So, lust and anger is a very deep sanskar but Baba says just just you know refrain from engaging in actions of the body based on thoughts of lust and anger. And Baba tells us in the Murli that even if there are storms, you know, even if there is a storm of lust or anger, even if it's you know, even if it's driving you crazy, just don't engage in action that's the most important. So, if you, so you know, when there is a de-addiction program, this is the method. So, you just deal with the storm. So, you don't, you don't give in to the storm. So, basically, you know, vices are also like addiction. So, it's, you know, what is addiction? How is addiction defined? When you continuously engage in an act which is harmful for you, but you don't leave it. So, you know, you are, you know that it's harming you, you know it's not good for you, but you are not able to stop giving into it. 
that is called addiction and lust and anger is the deepest form of addiction because you know yeah, obviously when Baba tells us we understand but then why are we not able to give in to it because there are withdrawals. So you know your ego starts hurting and then you feel so many emotions and feelings and it is driving you crazy and all of that stuff. So Baba says just don't give in to it and that is the only way you can de-addict yourself. So first thing is absolute abstinence from sensual engagement in sensual pleasures that is first thing. Then Baba says sensual pleasure does not mean just the act of lust but even food you know our food has to be sattvic and pure. So do not engage in uh, the you know this even the other senses let whether it is the sense of the eye or the tongue or the ear. So we should be okay with pure food cooked in Baba's remembrance you know if the tongue needs more than that or all the time your eyes are looking to at watching something interesting ears are just pulling you to hear something interesting all of that is all of that is again lust. So just be very wary of that. So our senses should not be our source of pleasure. So what should be our source of happiness? Baba, self-realization, not sensual pleasure. That is uh, the first dharana we need to have. That is why celibacy, pure food, and not engaging in waste, watching, hearing, all that is a very important dharana for the one who is aiming to be pure. Then there is um, the, this is the purity of the body and then there is the purity of mind. So in the mind also Baba says, when there are thoughts of you know uh, when, the, when then there are thoughts of based on you know body consciousness you are thinking about other people's bodies your own body um, thinking about people's actions events uh, you are thinking about uh, you know somebody or something which is making you feel have thoughts of anger or lust or jealousy or a criticism or any of that kind just check and change. So when there are thoughts like that you cannot resist them but check and change and the more you become aware that you have a lot of these negative thoughts and waste thoughts going on increase your yoga power. So just try to increase your yoga power just try to practice more soul consciousness and remembrance of Baba. Do not think about the old world. So if your mind and buddhi is tuned into the old world, the impure world, then thoughts of, uh, thoughts of the impure world which are thoughts based on vices will fill your mind. That is why Baba says, to refrain from to have purity of mind it is very necessary to be man mana bhav to remember Baba. So until you give your mind to Baba you the mind cannot be pure and even when we talked about the body you know Baba is continuously telling us to be a trustee. What is a trustee? A trustee who is somebody who understands and um, who really believes it is not just about telling Baba that you know I am a trustee. No, when you have this deep dharana that I am a soul and this body, this mind, this wealth belongs to Baba then you know you have this respect for the body 
this respect for the mind that you don't abuse it. So, you know, there is a very interesting association between ownership and abuse. And um, it is paradoxical, but you abuse that which you own. You don't abuse that which you don't own. So, the moment you think that this is my body, then as soon as you have a moment of privacy, you start abusing it. So, you know, even if somebody is a diabetic and he knows he will die or he will, uh, you know, suffer if he takes more sugar, he will not eat sugar in front of other people, but he will eat sugar as soon as he is alone. So, you know, you don't mind dying when you are alone. So, <laughs> you just you just give in to your sensual desires and other stuff. So, Baba says you have to have this deep dharana that this body is not mine, this body belongs to Baba and Baba the ocean of purity has taken my body, you know, I have surrendered my body to Baba and this body is now committed to the task of purifying the world, to the seva of purifying the world. So, I do not have a right to engage in impure actions through this body. So, you have to have this deep dharana that this body is surrendered, this mind is surrendered. And if you do not have this dharana, then you know, even if you think that I want to be pure and I do not want to engage in actions which are impure. But if you have not made yourself a trustee and if there is not this deep surrender, then this uh, beautiful law that whatever you call your own will ultimately be abused will start working and then you will end up engaging in vicious action. This is why it has to be very deep inside, deeply seated that this body is not mine, it belongs to Baba and this body is surrendered to the task of purification of the world. So, no impure act can happen through this body. And I am just a trustee taking care of this body which is an instrument for creating a pure world. So, just think about this. So, when you sit in meditation along with, you know, creating an attitude towards yourself and remembering Baba, create an attitude towards the body, the, uh, you know, the mind, the wealth, the other uh, relationships that are around you, that you are a trustee of them. So, just uh, in meditation, spend some moments uh, also practicing that swaman, that I am a trustee and I am not the owner. So, this swaman will help you to rise above this, this uh, tendency or this pull to abuse that which you own. So, this is one thing and then surrender the mind, be man manabhav. This mind is here to do mansa seva, this mind belongs to Baba. And Baba is, you know, radiating his light and might through my mind always. Do you look at your mind like that? What is your mind? Your mind is a conduit for the energy of the Supreme Soul to reach the souls of the world. Do you even understand the importance of your mind? So, this mind that is Man Manabhav, this mind which is connected to the mind of God is the conduit which is making this world, you know, vibrate with peace and purity and love. So, I cannot make the impurity of the world interfere with my mind. So, that is how you keep your mind pure. So, even if there is a thought, just check and change it by knowing that that is not that is not what your mind is for. And then there is the purity of money, so you know wealth. So, when you use your wealth for 
when you use your wealth motivated by lust, anger, ego, attachment, greed and your wealth goes to impure souls then that wealth is creating karma because that wealth is being used to create greater kalyug. So this is why my wealth is surrendered to the task of creating a pure world and my wealth is just for this purpose. All my money is for being used to create the ta to used for the task of creating angels from humans, deities from humans. So my wealth is for yagya seva. When you have this deep dharana, then you will be able to overcome the temptation, uh, you know, which Maya gives you to waste your wealth and use it for, you know, pursuits of sensual pleasures or, you know, just give it away to impure souls because you are attached to them. So all that purity of wealth will also happen when you think about yourself as a trustee and so you create karma through body, through mind and through wealth and when that karma is created then you know those karma have consequences. So it's not like if you use your wealth to create greater kalyug then you will not suffer because of it. And I will tell you one very simple example which just happened a few days ago. So there is this Kumar and he got a job and then you know it's not like he doesn't do Yagya Seva, he does Yagya Seva also, he supports Baba's task also but you know uh, maybe he does 20% of it or 30% of it but 70% is with him and then you see that uh, that Kumar is earning a lot of money you know these days when you get a job sometimes you get very high paying jobs so that Kumar is earning a lot of money but he does Yagya Seva also but then he, he has a lot of money at hand also and then you see what are needs so you need uh, four dresses five dresses not more than that you need a small house and you pay the rent and so basically our, your needs are met in 10,000, 15,000 or 20,000 a month but then all the extra money what, what to do with that so you know what he does is he uh, keeps uh, just all day what he's doing is he's doing online shopping so window shopping so he will just um, open a website see everything available there and sometimes buy a thing or two or the other and then if you keep doing online shopping all day what will be your state of mind <laughs> so you know he started doing that and then after some point of time he thought maybe you know I should invest my money in the share market and then he started doing that share thing and then he lost 5 lakhs in that <laughs> and then he was very heartbroken and then he called me and then he said you know Didi this money has driven me crazy <laughs> So I, I don't know, I always thought that, you know, money will solve my problems. But I think, you know, when I didn't have money, I was very okay. But now I'm going into all the wrong things because of this money. And uh, then I told him, why don't you think of yourself as a trustee? So, you know, don't just think that, you know, a portion of my wealth belongs to Baba. No. You know, whatever I have belongs to Baba. And even if you are not using it right now in Seva, just have this attitude that this belongs to Baba. And even when you save it, you must know that, you know, tomorrow when I go to Madhuvan or do something or there's a big Seva, then I will surrender it. But, but being a trustee will save you. And then, you know, he started doing that and now his life is so much better. So, Baba says that, you know, when you, so being a trustee will save you from creating vikarma. Because energy in the body, thought, mind space in the mind and extra wealth, 
these are the biggest sources of vikarma and for a vikarmi soul energy is always less thoughts are always less and money is always less because you are a papi so you you are always tempted to do so much pap that you know the resources are never enough but if you are on the path of purity you will always feel that there is extra energy extra capacity to think and extra money and if you don't think about yourself as a trustee then that temptation maya gives will make you create vikarma so this is the dharana you need to uh, be pure so if you don't uh, surrender your body mind and wealth then purity is not possible so imbibing knowledge remembrance and then this dharana and then the fourth thing is seva so you know i have already already covered seva so seva also is the subject which makes us pure because in seva apart from the body mind and wealth our sanskars also get purified so you know once you think about yourself as a seva dhari then you purify your body mind and wealth that is one thing but our sanskars also get purified because you see um somebody who doesn't ever tolerate will tolerate for seva <laughs> so you know when you are a seva dhari and somebody is even somebody is you know to hurling insults at you you will say okay if i shout back then probably you know they will be discouraged from listening to gyan so let me just tolerate it so you will it starts like that and you know once you start using your powers and your virtues because most people don't get an opportunity to use their virtues so you know um, let's say in lokic life maybe you have created a a a position for yourself where nobody insults you yes mostly in lokic life you know if you are if you have conducted yourself with dignity and uh, if you have done a lot for others or maybe you are in a maybe you are just rich or maybe you are in a big position and nobody insults you then there is no opportunity to tolerate and you know there was this one brother and uh, he said that um so when i asked him what seva do you want to do so he's very uh, you know financially very rich uh, in, according to the world and then he said uh, i want to do you know seva something like you know cleaning dishes or maybe you just put me out at the gate of the center and i will be the watch post watchman or something so i said why do you want to do that so he said because you know when i'm standing there people don't know who i am so they will behave you know normally with me and then i will have to use my power to tolerate because i never need to use my power to tolerate everybody is always polite to me because of my position otherwise so if i don't tolerate if i don't fail, don't accommodate how will i grow so i said yeah that's a very good idea and he said if i'm washing dishes nobody will think you know i'm a businessman i'm well wealthy or something so maybe they'll just come and tell me okay you you wash this also or why are you not washing it fast and then i will use my power to tolerate so i i would like that so that was very sweet and um this is how you know you in seva when you are a seva dhari you do what is what you asked to do yes so whatever seva you are given and in that seva maybe you don't enjoy the privileges of who you are in your lokic life and when that situation comes then you have to deal with situations you usually avoid because of your power and position in the lokic world and that is uh, a very good method to purify your sanskars so in seva 
not a, not just our body mind and wealth which is used for seva gets purified but even our sanskars uh, get purified because we have to use our virtues and our powers and everything and you know maybe uh, you are in a role where you cannot be very sweet you know you can you may be sweet inside but you cannot be a sweet talker maybe you are in a role like that but when you are a seva dhari you can practice talking sweetly also so you know you in a in when seva you know you are given many opportunities where you can use your skills use your qualities your virtues your powers which otherwise are very difficult to use and until you use them how do you master them so this is the method to be pure and when you this is why gyan yog dharna seva is very important and when the more you get purified you know you automatically feel that you are not influenced by behaviors and events and the old world in general around you and then even if you are in an atmosphere or around souls who are full of vices you don't get attracted or pulled into their vicious nature nor do you get annoyed and frustrated by their behaviors and that is something which is which happens when you practice these knowledge yoga dharana and seva so this is why baba is the purifier and baba is giving us the road map to purity and the more we follow shrimat the purer we will become okay om shant